tried to make you be like us, and in so doing, we helped to destroy the vision that made you what you were. And as a result, you and we are poorer, and the image of the Creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we were meant by God to be. Hi, I'm Sarah Stratton, Reconciliation and Indigenous Justice Animator at the United Church of Canada. And I'm Maggie McLeod, Executive Minister for Aboriginal Ministries and Indigenous Justice at the United Church of Canada. My work involves helping the Church live out its apologies to Indigenous peoples and the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. One of the things I'm often asked is, haven't we done that? Isn't that all over now? The Church has to accept that. We are indigenous to the land from the Creator. We had a way of life that was very spiritual. We had thanksgiving for everything. The food from the ocean, the food from the forest. We lived with the land. And we need to pursue those values again. We still aren't up to par. Our people still live in poverty all over this country. Our kids are committing suicide. They're lost. They don't understand what happened. They don't understand why we are drenched in alcohol and drugs. They don't understand a lot of things. The fact is, we won't have lived out the apology and we won't have achieved reconciliation until we have clean water and adequate housing on reserves. Until Indigenous youth are no longer committing suicide in disproportionate numbers. Until Indigenous children receive equitable education and social welfare funding. Until we know why so many Indigenous women and girls go missing and murdered. Until Indigenous peoples are full participants in decisions affecting us and the lands we live on. In 1986, the Church apologized for ignoring the deep, rich traditions of Indigenous peoples and imposing our vision of civilization on them. We asked to walk together to heal our broken relationship. The question that still confronts us, 30 years on, is how? The Truth and Reconciliation Commission offers us a path in its call to the churches and to Canada to adopt the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as the framework for reconciliation, as the basis of the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. By this, we mean that we take to heart these basic principles in everything we do. That Indigenous peoples have the right to self-determination, the right to cultural and spiritual identity, the right to participate in decision-making, the right to lands and resources, the right to free, prior and informed consent, the right to be free from discrimination. The United Nations Declaration affirms rights that are the minimum standard for the survival, dignity and well-being of Indigenous peoples. These are not new or extra rights. They are rights that have always existed but have not been honoured. Systematic discrimination has worn away at the well-being and dignity of Indigenous peoples. Our faith compels us to respond to such situations. Jesus says, Come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Paul reminds us in Corinthians that, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. And so, we take up that call. Why, Satan, Samachtel, United Church of Canada, we do some algae. And the ASH to them, youth and the call to action number 48. Then tell them go to it, call to action. Made Jochum to it. Then Jochum to it, the Algechet. Then will I do it? A yoke, I'm sorry, wait for the Lord. Called United Nations Declaration 
of rights of indigenous people. Now, not so much so. In this, the plot of the United Church. At the national level, through our United Nations Declaration Task Group, and the caretakers of our Indigenous circle, we are now assessing what implementation of these principles would look like in the policies and structures of the whole Church. And we continue to advocate with government for these principles as it seeks to implement the United Nations Declaration. The question now for communities of faith is, how will you live out the Declaration? Who are the Indigenous peoples with whom you share the land? What are the issues they are facing? How can we build a relationship together, guided by the promises of the apology and given life by the principles of the United Nations Declaration? We are not sure what lies ahead as we complete this turn towards justice and deepen our commitment to a new identity, a new relationship, and a new way of being, both in the church and in the world. The nouvelle relation point à l'horizon et nous nous tournons résolument vers elle.